back to my YouTube channel. I'm Tsukumu Lusiwa, gracefully Tori, and I'm excited to host you. Um, if it's your first time joining us on this channel, hi, you're so welcome. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button somewhere um, down below here and turn your post notifications on so you don't miss any video I post from now going forward. I promise they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are a returning subscriber and you're part of the family already, hey, I see you. Thank you for coming back. But I need to say a huge apology before I go on because I have been MIA for about two weeks, if not a week and a half. Uh, hey, guys. Bendigoa, 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 Bendigoa. Uh, <laughs> and oh, oh, goodness. It's just been a lot. And then out of nowhere, lockdown. <laughs> what? But um, I'm okay. I'm good. Um, and life goes on. But without wasting any further time, let's get into the video. So since the inception of my channel, one thing I've been asked um, to do quite often, well, besides singing, which will come, guys, um, is a story time on uh my high school journey um for those that don't know i spent well i am based in Botswana, but i spent a whole five years in south africa in the northwest province um for my high school years and it's always an interesting story to tell and yeah um so first things first when i finished um standard seven um or towards the end of my standard seven or grade seven um, career depending on which part of the world you are um, I think for me it was pretty obvious that I was going to go to a high school out of town um, firstly my mother worked shifts so she was not about this thing where you know the parent is hardly home and a child raises themselves and so high school was the next best thing because sometimes you know um we love our families and everything but sometimes you send children to stay with families and things just go south and the whole family relationship just turns sour and so my mom and i were looking around and i knew i wanted to go to south africa because i love afrikaans i oh i just throat up afrikaans i hope i'm saying that right um i absolutely love afrikaans i had been learning and teaching myself afrikaans um since my early primary school years, I used to watch and binge watch Isidingo, um, Sivandalan, Igoli, and just literally study the subtitles just so I could at least pick up a word or two um, in Afrikaans. Because honestly, I think languages um, are a bit of my forte and I absolutely love them. So I wanted to learn more of Afrikaans and just grow in that. Um, and also because I also was a big fan or really I really loved geography um, in primary school and I think I wanted to learn more about um, South Africa from the geography that I had learned in primary school so um, that's the three reasons if at all yeah that I think I we chose South Africa so um we had a few schools in mind, but we ended up settling into Bethel High School. Bethel Word School for my sis. Um, it's in the Northwest. It's a secluded. Guys, you know what secluded is? It's extremely secluded. So you pass my figuring. On your way to Rustenburg, you'll pass a town called Lichtenburg. And then after Lichtenburg, there is Kulini. And then Putfontein. And that's where... Bethel is but it's in the middle of nowhere so um, you can imagine it wasn't my first time in South Africa thankfully but um, it was my first time in that part of the country and that long 10 20 kilometer dirt road drive was just like so you're going to abandon me in this place parent <laughs> but thankfully when I got there um, it was a whole new experience and I really enjoyed my five years there. So um, I arrived um, at Bethel High School and everything was lovely. I settled in and um, I remember the first thing that I 
realized was that there was going to be a language barrier. Um, I remember when my mom and I were busy setting up and she was helping me clean my room and everything. Um, a girl walked into my room and Coco, um, she said, Coco, Copela li fielo. My mom and I were like, hmm? and I was like, excuse me, because I was, guys, I was so sassy growing up. I was so, praise God, anyway. Um, and I was like, excuse me. She was like, Copela li fielo. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> it's just like, and she pointed to the broom and we're like, oh, le halo. Oh my goodness. So I realized, you know, off of the bat that there was going to be a language barrier and I was going to have to adapt and adjust, which was really something that wasn't too difficult for me because I love languages. So yeah, I arrived, you know, I can't remember who my first roommate was. I think it was Bonolo, but I can't remember. Um, and so I arrived and it was good. Um, I remember you know on the first day like when my parents stopped us all all the girls like majority of the girls were there and they were so and they were sobbing and talking and i was this girl that came from a different country and i'm walking around and i'm seeing people in their rooms like most there i'm like hi how are you are you okay guys i know it's gonna be okay don't worry and so i remember i walked outside and i found a girl cleaning a dustbin yes Guys, boarding school, <laughs> we, yes, we used to like clean our own dustbins and I'll get to the pad bin story as well. That was just like, that was just it. Um, and so she's cleaning this dustbin and I'm okay. I'm like, what's going on? She's sobbing. And I go up to her and I ask her, hi, how are you? Are you okay? What's going on? Why are you crying? And this girl was basically just homesick, guys. And I, I felt like, you know, I, I had to be like the mother hen. Oh my goodness <laughs> and i you know i just want to know it's going to be okay we're going to get through this you know um tomorrow is going to be a better day and wada 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 and yeah and so my high school journey began i must add i think it surprises me how i wasn't scared of being in a different country especially at a very young age i think i was 14 and i didn't miss home i remember when my mom left, I was the one that was pushing her, like, to leave. Like, Amaya, it's okay, I'm fine, bye. And she was there, like, are you okay? You know, all of those things. But it was super cool. We started school, and I actually liked school. And that's weird, because in primary school, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered with school. You know, I passed, like, on an A in my PSLE. And I think I attribute that to um, having really amazing teachers and everything. But I really could not be bothered with school. I love music and I loved extracurricular activities. And that was on period. So I got there and I really enjoyed school. I even loved maths. Like I was getting A's in maths and it was like, what's going on? Um, I uh, fell madly in love again with Afrikaans. I loved English. Um, and I was actually called Miss English for most of my varsity life. And I think it's because number one of, I, I think I loved, or well, I was always speaking English and I had a different English accent as compared to most of the girls. So I remember most times, um, even in grade eight, the matriculants that people feared or that was notorious um, about, you know, being tough or whatever, would usually call me when I walk by and they go, yeah, it's English, come. And I'd come and they would just sit and basically just, you know, ask me questions about Botswana or about anything else just so that I could speak English to them. Um, it was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, yeah. And then one thing also, um, in our hostels, we had about um, 65 girls. 65, 60 girls in our hostel. We had about 10, 11 hostels. So, yes, there was a lot of us. <laughs> um, and when I arrived, I was like the only girl from Botswana. And so I did a lot of teaching about Botswana and, you know, uh, where Botswana is. Because, you know, some people think Botswana is in South Africa or it's a province. And I was doing a lot of teaching about that. And in the whole school, there were about, I think, 10 maybe girls 
from Botswana. Yeah, but surprisingly, the name Botswana landed on me. Like, guys, guys, hear me. What? Yeah, so I was called Botswana in high school. I was Botswana, I was Twani, I was Twana girl, I was Butui. Those were my names. And then I also got the name Loose Girl and Lucy from Mulusiwa. So I remember sometimes we playing like netball and then somebody goes, Hey, Botswana! Yes, Twani! Loose Girl! It was so hilarious. And it was, yeah, it was just super, super hilarious. And I think what was weird is that when I came back um, after high school, um, if somebody ever said the word Botswana, I would look back. Because <laughs> I thought they were calling me. Ah. Oh, yeah, I did. I absolutely love languages. Um, we studied three languages, English, Sotswana, and Afrikaans. The Sotswana there was nothing like... Um, to the Buen nothing like. So I struggled like nobody's business. I struggled um, especially with speaking. I think I did pretty well um, with my written work and everything like that, but my presentations, oh my goodness, I, oh, it was the hardest thing ever. Uh, I actually even did better in Afrikaans than I did in Zizwana and in my Afrikaans presentation. Like, guys, it was very hectic. But, hey, we pulled through. I got a good mark in my matrix, so, yeah. Um, I loved English. English was my forte. I think um, best in English was my most consistent award throughout uh, my high school career. I loved English so much that I remember sometimes even, like, the junior students when I was more senior would come and ask for like how with the essays and things like that and i thoroughly enjoyed it like i cannot talk about my high school and not talk about um this amazing woman called Meme Fane. She, i don't i don't even know how she did it she was just she's a queen she was a woman she was a virtuous woman Meme Fane was an an elderly woman an elderly teacher and she taught i think it was design and technology oh Guys, that lady could even just the way she walked. She had this presence about her. Yo! One thing that I learned from her that I still apply today, um, she used to say as a lady, when you walk, wherever you are, it's it's like it's your stage when you're walking. And you should always, you know, look to the front, look to the left, and to the right. Always be aware of your surroundings but gracefully oh that woman in my high school food was a big thing so we were all boarding students and so we were fed at the dining hall um those were well that was how we referred to um the um the people who who who, who cooked in the kitchen um um and there was this meal um, I think it was every Tuesday evening. Maybe it's a swimming chicken. Okay. It was it was like a quarter chicken stew kind of like. But it was very <laughs> it was very like watery. You know, with like potatoes and tomatoes. Um, I think green peppers and carrots, I think, but it was like, you know how Jews usually have this, um, pretty thick consistency. Yeah, swimming chicken in a sweet, but in the midst of the water and the oil and the spices. It was, the consistency was very, very loose. So we'd have swimming chicken and bread. Yo, that meal, guys. Oh, I remember when I started off there, it used to just gust the life out of me but talk about adaptation like uh. and then obviously on Sundays we had um your fried chicken and um uh several colors 
seven colors and um, custard. And <laughs> the best thing um, for me was that um, I used to sometimes help with dishing. So when I was a prefect, so when you were a prefect, um, you were able to help with dishing. And in most cases, I would find myself with the chicken on Sunday. <laughs> ah, you wanted to be my friend because what? I will get you a good piece. <laughs> oh my goodness. I remember there was a point where I gained so much weight because when you're helping out um, with serving, if there's like anything left over, then you can get like two. Or for example, Sunday um, custard dish. Yeah, Sunday custard dishing. Like people would usually get like a scoop, um, but you could like get like a full cup. And that was like the best thing ever. <laughs> Oh yes, when talking about the food, I cannot not talk about machuchu gaacha. A Saturday pakela, um, uh, especially during the winter season. So my chuchu was like maguinya. So, um, it was like a trend, a tradition, um, that every Saturday, you know, we all like scourge and you know try and you know be the ones that get or purchase fat cakes. Kotak shopong and you pay you purchase fat cakes and acha and poloni and it was the most hearty thing ever if you've been to a high school i think more more especially like a boarding school um you've heard about treatment or initiation of newcomers and first not first years but grade eights or form ones and the same thing was evident at my high school. Um, but the funny thing about the treatment at my school is that it didn't happen when you arrived the first month. No, 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 no. It happened at the end of the year. So <laughs> it was called last Sunday. Guys, from the beginning of the year, from January until December, you are warned about last Sunday because that could be... <laughs> that could be your day last sunday guys was a whole ensemble if you ask me so during last sunday um this is the last sunday of school the matriculants would go and redesign their uniforms so they cut it up it was like a tunic dress so they cut the dress up and make skirts or make it into like a sleeve a head they would like the matriculants would go all out with this uniform you know and so we come to we come to we come to lunch at the dining hall on sunday and when you get there there's no matriculant inside and once everybody is inside the dining hall i don't know how it happens i don't know how they get the signal but then sometimes they will lock everybody inside the dining hall or they will make sure that all the all the exits are blocked or, so, or i don't know and then sometimes they'll come in or you'll hear maybe somebody inside start hitting the tables and it's it's just chaos and then it maybe goes silent and then the song starts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> guys <laughs> this this you know what just thinking about it now is like i'm talking about a whole like soapy or drama series but i'm being legit honest so the song will go and then the matriculants would maybe walk around counting but if you had a good like a good di mama they would have tipped you, Hornana, don't come for lunch. I will bring your lunch. Lock yourself in your room, baby, because what? <laughs> Today is not a good day. So Jibama was like, like your, can I say school mom, but like a student as well. So we had like the mamas, the babas, the sisters, the grandfather. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, and then, they'll start, and then they'll go, mm, 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 m
like girl when they find you like out of nowhere like your whole table is surrounded by people like yeah! they're making so much noise and like the chicken will ask you so why did um you refuse to do this last time or whatever the case may be and then sometimes guys <laughs> and sometimes it just ends there and then it's ugh, okay maybe that you know we go on and we have our lunch but there was this one year i think i was in grade 10 i think i was in grade 10 yeah it really got bad and i think the police had to be called or something like that because those matriculants guys how are comment down below if you went to a high school and there was treatment and how that went about i know like before we came to the school apparently the treatment was really hectic like they would for example like draw a bicycle on a piece of paper and they would give it to you and they tell you to what are we this piece of paper as if it's a bicycle and go to the tuck shop and buy them stuff or they would um um, tell you to switch um, a light, the a light on or on and off, um, using your tongue. The funniest one, this is sad, but it's funny, is after they would put you in a closet and they would like close you inside and you were supposed to commentate a soccer match <laughs> in Africans, guys, in Africans. Um, but the, the catch was that no team was going to win and no team was going to lose and there was going to be no draw. <laughs> and then there was this thing. So uh, because it's a girl's school and if, you, if you're a guy for 10 seconds, just block your ears. Um, we had pad bins, obviously, in our hostels. I think every hostel, so our hostels were like, double stories so there was um the ground floor and the first floor so every bathroom had a pad bin but the catch was that there was no one who's gonna come every single month and empty the pad bin for you uh -uh. the pad bin was basically um your responsibility so every i think it was every month end um there was like a dumping site at the end like over here long like school so you'd be given paraffin you'd be given you'd be given i think a candle and matches i think yeah and you were had to go and dispose off <laughs> dispose of those pads so it was like yeah it was, i think it was every single month so we'd go we'd go every single month and um, would take the pads, well not the pads, the bin, um, to the dumping site, um, and we the tolola, and then they burned, and we just go sit and chill there under the stars for like an hour or so, and then come back. And one thing that really, that was really weird for me, actually a culture shock for me, um, um, when I arrived, when I got to high school, when I was settling into, the whole space was. The greeting culture. You know how you greet your elders. You greet people when you're walking in the street. It's it's courtesy. You know, or when you meet them at the store, it, it can become a whole big like it's a problem, it's a predicament. You know? And so I used to get laughed at a lot because I used to greet non-stop. Um, so I'd go, and my greetings are very animated. If you know me, some people will say um, my greetings sound like I'm singing them. So it's always, hello, hi, do me like. Like majority of the time, that's just how I greet naturally. So every time I'd be walking in the corridors of school and I would see someone, I wanted to greet them. Um, hi, hello, and for Bonnet, it was really weird, because <laughs> the girls there, you know, and for Bonnet, that's, 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 that's their culture, it's okay, but they could actually just walk past each other, um, and push up ahead. I was, I was a very versatile student, um, in high school, I did a lot of things, um, with regards to activities and things like that. Um, actually, in grade 12, I actually got that, you know, the most versatile student award. I'll maybe put a picture here. Or maybe I'll do a slideshow at the end. I don't know. 
um, <laughs> um, whatever happens. Um, and I did a lot of things. Like I'm that that person who always likes being busy. I think I'm only starting to turn down um, now of my life, but being busy was always like my forte. Ugh, so weird. But I did a lot of things and I think I did pretty good at them. I played netball, I was in the choir, I did review. Let me tell you about um the choir, guys, choir was Monati, okay? Choir was Monati. Oh my goodness, it was nice. It was nice. Um uh, and I think what made it super nice is because we had this amazing choir conductor who has sadly passed away now, but he was just like everything. There was a school song, guys. Yo, yo, yo. It was called but it used to go, Mabefele Gimma Gauta, Mabefele by Tapota. Helele Mabefele, Mabefele Gimma Gauta, Mabefele by Tapota. Helele Kinete, Haya Mabefele. Helele Mabefele. Haya Mabefele. Guys, it was, that song was everything. And then there was something called review. Review was my heart. Review was, so review was like high school musical, if you've watched high school musical. So it was where you sing and dance at the same time. Oh, did I not love review? I know there was one point where my review and my choir schedules were clashing and I was just like, it is what it is. Like, it's been good. Choir. Was it choir or netball? One of the two. And I was like, bye. And I loved review. And um, I loved review. And I loved um, our review teacher, who was my mom. You from Foster. I absolutely love him. <laughs> and I did so well at review. Um, I remember I was given the lead role of Sally um, in um, our review and it was super, super amazing. And then the best part is I think in my final year or my, in my final year or somewhere there, final year of grade 11, um, we had like a hostel, hostels competition um, and it was review as well and the winning team would um, get to go to the state theater in Pretoria to perform against other schools. Did I not get my children in order? And I was like, guys, we need to do this. And so we coached and did everything. And we won um, against all the other hostels in the school. And these are like babies. I don't know if they were grade eight or grade nine, somewhere there. And we won. And then we actually went to the state theater and um, our team was the only student choreographed um, team. Other people had like, oh, hey, dancing with the stars. And I got the choreographer's award. <laughs> like what? Um, I did I did so many things. I was in the church committee, guys. Oh my goodness. And speaking of church, so when I arrived there. I'm a little born again, little girl. Church, our school was interdenominational. And so there was no resident pastor at the time. So what happened is um, every Sunday would get a pastor come in. So sometimes was a pastor from ZCC, sometimes was a pastor from a Catholic church or a Lutheran church or a Dutch reform. But unfortunately for Tina, I'm a Pentecost. You know, it was very... I think we only got like a, a Pentecostal pasta maybe once, guys. It was like, oh, but regardless, like church was lit. Church was, yo, guys, church was lit. So I think later on, we we then got a resident pasta. Oh, guys. And then I was in the church committee and it was Pentecostal. So then we had, you know, our Pentecostal church, but it obviously it's still it, it, it accommodated everybody else. And the other guys um, who were maybe a Roman Catholic and stuff still had their confirmation classes and their pastors still came in um, when need be. And there was this 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 thing that really got to me. Guys, Murti always made me sing the same song every single Sunday. Yo, guys, guys. I used to, like, I used to want to run away sometimes. He used to love 
Nu se fa pa no ki po ha we na mo lo ki wa ka. Um, people actually ask me today, like if I had a child, would I send them to boarding school? Most definitely. Um, most definitely. I feel like there's certain life lessons that you can only learn from boarding school. There are certain coexisting skills, if I can call it that, that you only learn in boarding school, especially a girl's boarding school, honestly speaking. Because, um, I mean, you know how people always say, like, girls are just dramatic. You, you get to experience so many different characters. And at the end of the day, there's no mama there, there's no papa there. And you guys are in the middle of nowhere, for example. In my high school, you had to make it work. You know, y'all are going to fight and get over it. Y'all are going to, you know, like each other one day and not like each other the next day. And it's going to be, okay, it's life. You move, you grow, you know. And before before I close this video off, I know it's going to be a very long video. I'm sorry. <laughs> a crazy story. I remember we we were, I had a, I, I remember we, I had a, a group of friends and we were crazy about christ we were like the girls that would like give special items on sunday at church the singing girls you know and we were so crazy about christ guys so one time we're like guys i don't know if it was the first time we prayed and fasted or it was just another prayer and fasting um exercise if i can call it that so we prayed and fasted for i think it was a whole week and so the plan was that then on sunday sunday um we we actually go for um breakfast lunch and supper with everyone but the catch was that we're not going to this food we're still fasting this food we're going to keep <laughs> and then when we break the fast like we're gonna have this whole feast guys was it not the most hilarious thing? So I think I think it was on Sunday, if not Saturday, because we had like like cheese and bread and stuff. We literally everyone went to the dining hall. We got our breakfast and we um the food was assigned to one person's closet. Put that in the closet. Gal lunch, eh? Hey, um rice the air and the fried chicken and the custard ratamaya and then we got them put them in the closet and then at supper, I can't remember what we we're having for supper. We went to get, put them in the closet. <laughs> and sometimes we just come and peep and just smell the food. Guys, it's the prayer and fasting. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. And then we had our, our, our break in prayer. It looked the amen. Like guys, I don't even know how we didn't get sick. Like we had all those three meals and our high school staple food was like noodles with tinned beef and tinned canned fish and the salsa, acha, marinisi. What else? I think that was it. So that was also there as well, guys. That thing slaps hard. Like if you haven't had that meal, the, 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 the noodles meal, please try it. People be like, oh, that's disgusting. And then you try it. And you're like, where is this bit my whole life? It's the most amazing thing ever. Anyway, um, <laughs> I just had to share that before I close this video. Oh, I forgot to share like some of my high school merchandise that I actually still have till this day. So this um this is um this was our matric. Um a matric present gift. I've taken this stuff out. Um, it was like a, it's a flask with two cups. Um, yeah, and I've actually, I've had this, guys, 2010, I've had this for 10 years, and I only started using this, I think this year. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. Yeah, absolutely love it. It's so sentimental to me. One thing that's very popular in South Africa is, like, matriculants get um jerseys or t-shirts like matric matric only uh, and we were matriculants 2010 world cup 
matriculants. So we call ourselves Marema World Cup because in South Africa, matriculants are called Marema Glo. So we are Marema World Cup. And so we got these t shirts, guys. It's not ironed. I mean, I never wear it, it's just there. But I found it, and okay, here's the front. Let me show you. It says, Bethel, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot, guys. But I think I think this referred to, you know, us. I don't know. I don't. I, I can't remember what the rationale behind this was. This is how it looked like. Ninety minutes, no extra time. And I understand that a soccer match is ninety minutes. So World Cup, soccer World Cup, like us, ninety minutes, no extra time. Like we were done with matric, all right? And then it said matric twenty ten log out and then it has my name at the bottom um i don't think i can actually see we have come to the end of this story time i really hope that you enjoyed it and i hope that it made you smile um especially in the midst of everything that we're going through um uh today in society please don't forget to like comment subscribe guys subscribing is absolutely free if you have a gmail account you can sub subscribe just click the button and then click the bell as well so you don't miss um any time that i post 